So I'll be talking about this work and also another work that I did together with Francesco and Lina. So this was a work that uh, in fact was the master's uh, project of Leia Lautenbach. Now she's doing a PhD in Germany. Together with Bernard Gemel, which is a professor in CBPF, which is a center for physics uh, in Rio de Janeiro. But before I talk about invertible maps, recovery channels, and how these things are connected, I want to show you where I come from. Okay, this is what I said that's taking a little bit. Okay. So here is Recife, here is Brazil. So people usually know Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo, and this is like very far away. And just for us to have an idea how the map of Brazil, <laughs> so this is kind of more than a thousand kilometers. Okay, so it's very far. So here is like the economical center, and we are not Brazil. But okay. We have one of the biggest carnivals in, in Brazil, and I would say in the world. And we have also very nice, beautiful beaches. Yes. And also this center for um, natural science and a quantum information group theory where I'm the head of, and also experiment. So, okay. So visitors, visitors are very welcome, and I hope that some of you will visit me there in India. Just make some advertisement. And okay, so I'm working with open quantum system dynamics. This is the big picture of my work. And I'd like to give these two pictures because we could just think about the processor, which is more or less the size of 10 millimeters. For this processor to work, I have to put this in a big room full of control, okay? So this is completely connected to the things that I'm doing. Like, how can I, I just protect my quantum system in a way I, it's interacting with the environment, but I want to protect some quantum features because I will use this for computation or for distribution, whatever, okay? So then my... Main motivation about all these things that I will be talking about is, well, I want to be able to describe, understand, control, and possibly avoid damage its effect caused by this character of the environment. So I always have a system, which is the system of interest, okay? So I'm calling system is the system that I, I want to describe, which is connected to the environment, and the environment usually I don't have control about, okay? So, I can describe the dynamics of an open quantum system. For a closed quantum system, we just don't know quantum mechanics one, Schrodinger's equation. But for an open quantum system, I can give different descriptions. So I can think about, I imagine that I have some information about the environment. I don't have a complete information, but I have some information. So maybe I can give a, a microscopic description, like master equations and things like that. Or I can give more a more axiomatic description, which is I will just describe it the dynamics by a map, and the map is just acting on the uh, oper basic operator and is taking the basic operator from some time zero to time t, and to guarantee that I'm taking basic operators into, into basic operators, I'm requesting this map, this operator or super operator, to be completely positive and trace preserved. Okay, we know. They see the operators, they have trace one, they are positive. So I want to keep it in this way. But, but why completely positive? Because it can be that this guy, that the system, is entangled with some other part that I don't know. And I want to guarantee that this thing, this big thing, is also the density operator that is describing this, it's also going to a density operator. So I request that the extension of the map. And the identity is a positive map, and then as I say that the phi t be completely positive. Okay, so I'll be talking a lot, and I I would just say CPTP. So when I say CPTP, I'm just mean completely positive and trace preserved. So okay, I was saying about reverse invertible and recoverable maps. So I will differentiate what I mean. They seem quite similar, all these concepts. So first reverse, I say that a map is reversible. 
If there exists another CPT map, uh, lambda star, such that lambda star applied to lambda rho, it recovers rho, okay? And this for all initial states. It's possible to show that it's only true for unitary maps. So if I have an open cis, open quantum system dynamic, then I would, won't have a unitary, a unitary map. So it's not reversible in this sense, okay? So another property which is related to the mathematical property of the map is a map is invertible. If there exists another map, lambda minus one, not necessarily CP, I'm not thinking about the physical process. I'm just asking if there is a function that can invert this process. And then if, the, if there is this lambda minus one, I call it in, okay, the map is inverted. And there is a third definition, which is the first one, but relaxed, which is a map is reco recoverable if there exists another CPT map lambda tilde, such that lambda tilde applied to lambda rho recovers rho. But this is only in a subset. So I'm not request, press, requesting anymore the whole set of initial states. Okay? So then the idea was, you will see that the, like the very typical decoherence channels, like the phasing, amplitude damping, depolarizing, they have always a regime where they, they are not inverted. And we wanted to see how this mathematical property is connected to the physical property, which is to be recoverable or reversible. Is there any connection between these two things? So the question now was, how can we build a physically implementable recovery map that simulates an inverse evolution? And why? Why do I want to do this? So this invertible maps, they start to appear connected. Uh, in one point, is connected to non-Markovianity. So people wanted to understand when the map is non-invertible, if this is, it can define visibility or not. But I like also these results from Vinayak and Francesco, where they show that non-invertibility is a requirement for phases in, on the convex combination of channels. So you are seeing that the property of the map to be non-invertible non is connected to Markovianity, which is a completely physical description of the, of the dynamics. So you see that like a mathematical property is connected to something that makes a big difference if I'm describing it or if I have to build a model to describe this dynamics. Okay. Another thing that I think is a good motivation for it is well, we know for the real, the list that the near term uh, quantum computers that we have, we are not using quantum error correction, but we are using some uh, error mitigation strategies. And this is just one example. This is for, for the IBM computer. This is one of the algorithms that you can use this probabilistic error cancellation. And just to have an idea how it works, you have to be able to do this inverse. Okay, so this is, has, of course, this is why it's probabilistic because you will not do it perfectly. As I said, if it's not unitary, you won't be able to reverse it or whatever. But you can see an application for these uh, inversible maps or if you are not invertible, you won't have this operation. So it doesn't make sense to use this something. Okay, cool. So when we wanted to connect this, um, let's see, physical property of the map, which is the map being able to be recovered with this mathematical property with, with the inverse, we were searching for recovery strategies that could work as a receive kind of not really dependent on the initial state, but in a way as, a, as a, I wanted to do it as a black box. So if I come with my state, I run it through the black box, and at the end, I want to see if they have recovered it or not. So then one of these recovery maps, it's a very typical recovery map, is this PETS map. And what PETS realized is that if I look to two states, and if the relative entropy between these two states, if it doesn't change in time, then there should be a recovery map that I will recover my state, okay? And the results of PETS, they are even stronger than this because he's not only showing, okay, I have a theorem where I can prove that there are like 
Cobre maps exist in this case, but he shows how to construct them. And this is what exactly what I wanted. This receipt, like clear receipts showing. And then you have here, so this is how the patch recovery map is defined. So rho is the state that I want to be over. Sigma is just the other, do you remember that it was like two states, rho and eta, that the relative entropy doesn't change in time. So sigma is this other guy that the relative doesn't change in time. And I will call it reference state, okay? Because I will use this. So when I'm defining the paths, I need to know what's the evolution that I want to recover and what is this reference state, okay? That's why here, the lambda p depends on lambda. You see the lambda theory here, and it depends on sigma. So if I just have two states, okay, and one of them I want to recover, the other will be the reference state. Ah, and the lambda, this is like the dual, which if I know the cross operator is kind of easy to call it. So the idea was then to apply this path recovery map in a general scenario. So now I'm not using just for two states that I know that the relative entropy doesn't change in time. I said, well, let's just see what happens if I just use the whole set of initial states, if it will, like how bad this will work. We know that it won't work perfectly because I'm not fulfilling this condition, but maybe it won't be so bad. So let's see how what happens. So this is then an idea. I have some initial state, it will be full. Then I will apply the paths and recovery. And at the end, I want to compare how will be the like recovered state with the initial state. If the recovery is just perfect, they will be equal. And then to measure how, how similar they are, I will use the fidelity, okay? So I will do this, I run this many times for many different initial states. And the channel that I'm, I'm um, studying, I just, initially we just used, uh, looked for qubit uh, channels. But afterwards, we just, um, we generalized for qubits, but we are looking for dephasing, depolarizing, and to data. And we have this, this parameter P, it's just saying how strong is this decoherence channel. So if P equals to one, it, mean, it means that the whole block sphere will go to this line inside the block sphere. And this is one thing that I already was curious about because here the scenario of no inversibility is the line. Here the scenario that the polarizing is the point in the middle of the ball. So somehow I had the impression that the phasing is the both of them are non inverted both in these two uh, extremes points. But one I need the line, so I know that this guy is coming from here to here, and the other lose completely information. So how can I say if like Maybe do it, just connecting to this path recovery map, is this like, can I do it better here than here? Because here I have some information from where I came from. So this I will show you. And I also wanted to analyze another degrees uh, channel, which is this amplitude density. And it's similar to the depolarize. I'm just going to a point. I'm just going to the zero, zero pole. But the difference is that it's a non-unital channel. And it makes a, okay, now telling you this is just two families of maps and sometimes you can have general properties just looking to these two families of maps, unital and non-unital. So then we yeah, are the results. We uh, were just, as I said, we were looking for many initial state and we were probably, it's average fidelity compared to recovery state with the initial state. And okay, as I told you, we, we have to choose a reference state, but now I will not do like for each initial state a reference state because I want to use it as a black. So the initial state will be the state will enter, pass it through the black box, and I will repeat. So then I have to choose a general reference state, and this is what the first study that we did. What is the best reference state on average? So we started just searching in the block sphere for any reference state, but then we saw just because of the symmetry of these three channels, we could use some reference state that is just in between the two poles. Okay, is why we have chosen this guy. So what can we see here? For example, for the defacing, because of the symmetry of it, it doesn't make any difference if I choose 
zero or one or anything in between. Okay, so I can just see that the average depth is here flat. And P is giving me how strong is the coherence channel. So if P is very weak, then the average fidelity is lower because this the channel is stronger. So it will be more difficult to recover the information. Okay. So then for here, okay, we just realize we can use any reference state in between here is equal to one. For the depolarizing, things change. So I can see that the best uh, reference state is just Q equals one half. So is that it? And again, I see a strong dependence on P. And what I see comparing to these two uh, guys, the phase and the depolarizing, is that the average fidelity here is lower than the average fidelity here. And this is exactly what I was really anticipating. Is the case I have some information from where the state is coming. So this gives me an advantage when I was recovering compared to the depolarizing. Guys, if you want to integrate me at any time, I think only that will go, 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 go,
relative entropy, it is not changing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, we haven't tried this. Um, it's just giving, it's like a free parameter that I have to put something and I'm using identity. Okay. Okay, then we wanted to use this thinking about non Markovian evolutions. And before I really say this application, I want to uh, define what I mean by a Markovian evolution in, like in a quantum dynamics. So just thinking about a stochastic cross process, classical stochastic process, I say that the process is Markovian. If I have some variable, um, random variable x that can take value x and n and So it's Markovian if it fulfills the conditional probability satisfies this condition here, which means that if I want to find what is the probability that x assume the value x n, I just have, I just need the probability of x assume the value x n minus one and this conditional probability. So here it's containing this idea that the future evolution just depends on the present state. I don't know if the whole story. So for the quantum dynamics, I will do this. Okay, there are many different def definitions. I have to say this because, but this is one of the, the, like, the most used one, I would say. I will just use the, the maps. And I would say that it's Markovian if the map is divisible in all the CP maps. So I have, a, again, this idea, if I know the state in time in S, I will be able to tell you what is the state in time T. So future evolution just depends on the present state. And if the divisibility is not fulfilled, I say that the, the dynamics is non Markovian. Okay? I will just give you some examples, two examples, because to motivate a little bit, why I think this is interesting for quantum information processing, this Markovian. So here's one example. Uh, I'm just thinking about the qubit, block sphere. I start with the qubit preparing the state zero. And my map is the following. I will be discretizing time just to make it simpler. So each time step, I can give a rotation of 15 degrees for one side or the other, okay? It's only this. So each time step, I have a probability to go to one part to the well, good. So I will do this in time and then so on and so on. And then if I'm in, I am in this position and I can ask you, what will happen in time n plus one? What would you say? What is the, exactly, Donna one already said. Well, you just have these two probabilities. You can be here or there. So I didn't have to tell you anything what happened here in between. You were able to tell me what happens in time n plus one. Markovian, okay. So now an example of a non Markovian evolution. So you look a little bit puzzled. Okay. <laughs> you start again with your qubit in state zero, but now I will give a little bit of physical motivation about this dynamics. Imagine that my zero and one are, in, I just in, I'm just encoding this in the polarization state of a photon. And this photon is arriving here and in the path of the photon, I will put a half wave plate oriented in a way that it will do an X, a X or a Z rotation. But the probability that my photo will arrive here or there, it's like equal. So sometimes it suffers a X rotation, sometimes it suffers a Z rotation, okay? So then the map that is describing this uh, interaction between photon and half-wave plates is this map here. And if I start with the zero, I know that sigma X applied to zero is one, sigma Z applied to zero is zero. So I'm taking zero by identity, okay? Good. Now the next step is similar, but there is like kind of a correlation. If in the first path I had sigma x, then I will repeat the halfway plate oriented in the same way. And here again, sigma z, sigma z. So we know we plot like sigma x times sigma x. How many operators there? It's just a 
Paulis, info Paulis will be just identity. And then I have this map here. And okay, identity, identity, I just recover the state. So I start with zero, I go to identity, I come back to zero again. Good, now I can start with one. And then I just apply the maps that I had before. I go to identity and I come back to one again. Now, the same game. I mean, I'm in the identity. What will be the state in n plus one? You don't know. If you just know that you have these two possibilities, you have to know at least these two possibilities, but if you just have all the possibilities, you have to know from where you came, okay? So this is an example of no code. Just to know in the state, in time, the present state doesn't tell me anything about the future. And I like this example because here you can see something like useful for quantum information processing. So in time zero, I was working with two scenarios where the states are completely distinguishable. So zero and one, if I just know if it's this basis I'm working with, with one measurement, I will be able to tell you if it's zero or if it's one. The second time, the time one, just equal, no distinguishable. There isn't anything that I can tell you if you are like here or there. In time you two, again, distinction. So this is what we usually call the spectrum of information because you are recovering information about these two states. And this is useful for quantum information processing. Because imagine you have your system, you cannot completely isolate it, but it, this will be interacting with the environment. You are using distinguishability, for example, which is useful for quantum key distribution. And, but at some point you are recovering distinguishability. So instead of just doing this uh, measurement for point key distribution at certain time, you will wait a little bit more and you will have more distinguishability. Things like this, it's just a, an example, okay? Why we think, I think this, okay, this backflow information can be really kind of, you can see this as a resource. Cool. So, okay, no Markovian implies a normal electronic decay of information. I give an example with distinguishability. We can think also about entanglement and, many other quantities, okay? And now connecting those two things. <laughs> okay, just Markovian, not Markovian. A way to check if the dynamics is Markovian or not Markovian is, if it's not Markovian, I can try to divide my map in two CP maps, but this intermediate map, the V1, it won't be CP. One way to construct this intermediate map it's just, I use the inverse and the total map. So if you just replace this here, you will see that you are, will cover the lambda zero T, okay? So then we thought about, what if I replace the inverse by the paths? So the inverse, invert, this, this inverse map is not a CP map, but the paths is, by definition, a CP map. So we thought, well, from the, the first thing we thought it would be, we will just kill no Markovianity, but then we realized that, okay, we still, we just attenuated it, okay? Because the fact is that here there is still a non divisible map. So you still have some no Markovian feature. But then, okay, we were comparing, this is the approximated dynamics, which is just with this new intermediate map with the, with the completely dynamics. So we were doing this for the dephasing model. And before I just had a P parameter, which was giving the strength of the dephasing model. Now I'm talking about dynamics because I'm talking about Markovianity, Markovianity. So I have some time parameter and I have chosen two models. I'd like to say, but this is an informal way. The orange model is kind of a signal similar to Rabi oscillations. Imagine that you have your atom, whatever, just just jumping from zero to one, radio oscillations. And the other one simulates more kind of a thermalization, slowly going to some state. Okay, just to give some motivations why I'm using this type of model or this. So they are like two different physical situations. And to quantify the uh, Markovianity, I use distinguishability, as I showed you in that example. So then for the orange model, the, the one that is oscillating, I see that, okay, here I'm comparing the regional uh, dynamics with the approximated one. 
So as I said, after some time, I will move this fishability up to zero, and then I will recover this fishability. But for the approximated one, it will take longer to see this recovery, this does the backflow of this fishability. If I still have the backflow of this fishability, but it takes longer. So I'm attenuating this no Markovian effect. In the other example, I see that I can I have still recovery like of distinguishability, but I don't go back to the maximum. So in one model, I was I'm going to the maximum, the other I'm not going to the maximum. And this is nice. So we want an R. Ah, and this uh, scenario is much more connected to the scenario that the pets were supposed to work because uh, here I just have two states. So uh, we have chosen Rho and Eta to be the guys that um, the relative entropy doesn't change in time. Okay, so that's why we wanted to analyze the, also the pets in scenarios that they make more sense. Another thing that Okay, but we can also think about making an analysis that doesn't depend on the initial states. And this is what we did here. We were just comparing what is the Chi matrix of the original evolution with the Chi matrix of the uh, approximated evolution. How distant are they? Are they similar or are they not? So if the distance is zero, they are just equal. If they are, if it's two, they are completely different, okay? The Chi matrix, I don't know if it's anyone familiar with the Chi matrix. Well, it, it kind of, it's an isomorphism in, in a way that, imagine you represent your map by a matrix. So from this matrix, you can get crowd operators, everything that you need to define your map. Okay, it's just another representation of the map. But it's nice because it's a matrix, so you can even, you can do things that you do with matrices like Know if they are similar or not, checking the eigenvalues. Uh, and the eigenvalues tell you if it's a P or if the map is P or not. So it's it's nice. Can do work just with tiny And then comparing this, the chi matrix from the two, uh, the original and the approximated one, for the two different cases, we see that okay, the distances are different, so okay, because the properties were completely different. But then we observe something curious because in these two points, the distance are quite similar. So what would we conclude after this? We would conclude, okay, the original and the approximated and the original approximated, they are equally similar. No, because the distance are quite similar. So I would say they are equally similar. But if I go to these points in the distinguishability graph, I see that this point is close to where I completely recover the distinguishability. And here is the scenario where the approximated, okay, it's also connected to the maximum, but the maximum is very below the maximum that it was originally. So then we can conclude with this that the vision that points are most Markovian feature. What does this mean? I have my experiment, and you just have there your system interacting with the environment, and you want to use this no Markovian backflow to use to do some quantum information processing. So you tell the experimentalist, okay, these are the cross operators that we have to implement. And the guy, okay, he goes to the lab. And then finally, when he says, okay, he's not doing exactly the cross operators that he, you wanted. But in one scenario, you will still have the backflow in the way that you wanted. Ooh, I can do quantum key distribution. I can do, I don't know, Here, you're just destroying the backflow that you wanted. It was like worse just not to do anything at all. So this is why, what I mean by this, uh, it's opposite. Like making an error in one situation was completely different than in the other situation. So one, I describe the information backflow, in the other, I still have the information back. Okay? So you see that I started with the facts, and then now I'm talking about completely different things, but it's just an application. Questions? Yes. 
No, no, I'm just, yeah. It's just because of how we define the probabilities. Okay. But we are just be some, but this would be going down and this would be repeating. It's very critical. Okay. And this will mean that the discretionability here will be like also pretty. If here it will go down. Okay, then the last thing. <laughs> yes. Your your main need that in the test. So I'm trying to understand why that is for a also sometimes to understand it. But it's not so difficult. Yeah. 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 You are still have this guy, and this guy is not visible. So if you just think about, there is still a piece of some CP map inside. Yeah. Yes. It's not about construction. Yeah, but it's not easily visible. So if you, if there is still two, one CP and one, one CP inside. But the extent of the problem is the same part would be, like, they're only well, that is probably certain things that I'm saying. They are always CP. Even if they are not working perfectly, they are CP. They are always CP. But, but I mean, like, in terms of the, in terms of the instruction, what is the problem? Is it yet? Yeah. But that's in a box because it doesn't matter if you're placing. No, I this is it's not good dealers. Yeah. That's why it's approximated. So, just, so okay. The test now is a recovery in uh because you get the recovery and it doesn't work. But it's not an invertible man, different because the invertible yes, is, is. is not CP. The pets is CP. So they are different classes. But they that's what we wanted to know. How how similar are they? Yeah. 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 It's just by definition, this is just a mathematical property. Yes. Just think about bijective functions. What is the inverse function? This will be the lambda minus one, mathematical property. Now I want to know what is the physical process that goes back. And I'm approximating one, the mathematical function by a physical process, which also is represented by a mathematical function, but it doesn't, the lambda minus one, it doesn't have to fulfill any condition. It's just a mathematical thing. The only condition is like it takes rho to rho evolve to the initial rho. So the test map doesn't work in the two states. Work in the general scenario with all the initial states. Okay. It only works for a subset of states. Yes. 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 And here I'm using the subset where it works. Okay. No, it's because I'm just choosing these uh, two states where the relative entropy doesn't change in time. Okay. You can say that that's a kind of phenomenon that you see. If they don't have any words, there is that big of that rose to put the tolerable words. You can say that that's a kind of tolerable words. You don't know. You don't know. At, at the beginning, I was trying to do things like this really connect the the reverse with the mathematical properties. But then, yeah, I haven't done it. But it's a good question, maybe, yeah. One thing that I know, because I also, one question that I had with the pets, if they, okay, maybe I, I thought, okay, maybe I'm just not finding the best recovery strategy and it's just, I'm using the pets. But people show that the pets is the best strategy. So if you don't know how, like, if you don't have any information, just use the pets. For unitops, for units. 
<laughs> but okay, yeah. Uh, okay, the last part of, of this presentation then is this work. So we made a similar analysis, but now going to higher dimension. This was done together with Vinaya and Francesco. And the motivation for this work, we are still waiting for the answer, like we already <laughs> sent it to a fiscal review way, but I don't know why it's taking so long. Um, the motivation for it is this paper from uh, Karol Zikowski, where they show if you just have an ensemble of states and you choose one state and compare it with the fidelity with some other random state, the average fidelity between the random quantum states we will increase if you go to higher dimensions. So if you just go to higher dimensions, the, the probability that the two states will look similar, it's higher, the probability, the fidelity is it's bigger than if you just are uh, in one thing. Yes, it's kind of intriguing. And then we thought, well, this is more or less what we are doing, no? Because the path is not working perfectly. We are just comparing some state with some initial state. Which is more or less okay, it's not round because, but maybe this could help us to with the pets just going to higher dimensions. So, this was, <laughs> we had some hope, and we, but shh, ah, okay, just before I show the response, we had to generalize the, the channels that we were using. We decided to go to the phasing and the amplitude damping. As I said, we wanted these two classes, unital and non unital. This is one way of generalizing them for uh, higher dimensions. Also, uh, the reference state, we are generalizing it also for higher dimensions. And here, we started trying to do this average fidelity analysis, but it was, was quite, quite demanding because if I'm going to higher dimensions like dimension 20 or 40, as you see, so it was impossible to calculate it. So we just did the analysis that state independent. So what we are comparing here is, imagine you have a revolution, you apply the paths. So if the path is perfect, this will be just doing nothing. Okay, we were evolving, recovering. So we are comparing then the tri-matrix from this thing with the tri-matrix of the identity map. And ta this is <laughs> like the, Negative results, we are just seeing that things are getting even worse for higher dimensions. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, the, uh, this, yeah. Okay, it's a negative result. It happens. <laughs> it's good to work off also with you. This is for the defacing. So, you can see, and I think one thing is interesting, it's, what is interesting here is that. Okay, but there is kind of a plateau. So increasing the, the dimension is not even like it's doing worse, but at some point it's not really changing. So you're not getting anything. And the same here for the, the big channel is there are quite similar results. But what we noticed for the amplitude channel is that you remember the, at the beginning, the first slide that I showed you was this study about the reference state. And the amplitude damping channel, we were using the identity, but it wasn't so clear that the identity was the best reference state. And then we were a little bit concerned about this here in the generalization. So we were checking for all the reference states. And then we saw that, okay, if you use different reference states, then the dimension can give you some advantage, but it's not the best scenario because here the distance is bigger than the in the in the, tra in the orange. So, okay, it makes a difference, but it's not like it doesn't make sense to just go here because you already know that here your distance. Is okay, so this is everything that happened. First, we have established the bad, the bad heads met, met for these um, paradigmatic one qubit channels. Then we make this connection with the Markovian uh, evolutions, and we show that this backflow of information is not a good feature. Then we have investigated the performance of the pets in animations. And okay, this is something that I haven't done like, in detail, but we have some 
that if we still don't know exactly what this the best reference states on average, but we have some evidence that is this fixed point of devolution. So what is the point? That if you just apply the map, it's, it's not changing. And we have like evidences that is this point. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how do you take say, the, this one in which the relevant entity is the direct in an ideal case of the different Well, we, do, we did some study to, to try to learn it. I don't have like analytical expressions, as I said. Yeah. I just we did this checking for the what is reference say that be the biggest average fidelity. Okay, you should get to say it and we look at how it's changed. Yes. After the period of time. Is that Q? Yeah, it's Q, yeah. Okay. And, but this is something we arrived after just searching uh, everywhere. And then we just realized that it's enough to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And for the amplitude damping is zero zero, but this is not you cannot see it here because Q, zero zero is u u equals to one. So yeah, that's why yeah we don't know. Mm. Is there an explanation for why a higher dimension states and a random dimension states have the chance to have the They have a little paper so good to tell you this. Yeah. This. It doesn't make an explanation. I guess, I guess I'm not. No, no, for sure, because all Carol's papers, everything that he writes are very mathematical. So it's kind of, he's looking to a really constructing the average fidelity, but in like, not as I do the calculating. He's just doing it really, just finding some analytical expressions. No noise. I think it's an ensemble of random states, picking one, picking another, just comparing. But okay, I won't say much because yeah. Well, maybe I can give you the reference. Okay. I saw that you were taking notes. I right? think I'm just speaking too fast because we're like <laughs> sorry for me. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You would see that face based the value of the wallet. Does it also naturally fit the other identity models that do something? No, I haven't, that's for sure. <laughs> um what would be a face dependent model? I mean, sure, but I said, yeah, you said yeah, it. Yeah, you need to explain a little bit because I, I'm not familiar with it. I, I, I think that it would be something that puts in the mobile some change them uh, Yeah, um, can, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, great. Uh, thanks for the wonderful talk. So I'm just, because I'm looking at the amplitude damping model, right? So you're just changing the relative contributions of your your logical basis states in your system. But then, uh, but you could also instead ask what would happen if I am, maybe in, in my system, I'm interested in applying unitaries that change the relative phases, right? But then those uh, gates that I'm applying are noisy as well. Would the model also extend to those type of channels? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. 
I I really don't know. Yeah. I think so because like there is no restriction because we were just using the pets and the pets they don't have any restriction about what is the evolution that I will recover. It can recover any CP evolution. Okay? But I don't know if you can yeah. just extend yeah. like use the phase and depolarize to write this uh, on the channel. Because I don't I don't know. Mm. Because I mean, you could move from the logical basis to the header mod basis, right? And everything would still transfer nicely. It's just the interpretation would be slightly different. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's true. But, hey, well, I, I haven't thought about it, sorry. <laughs> oh, cool. Maybe, maybe that's something we can try and investigate. <laughs> okay. Okay, and we can see maybe the pet is doing better there. <laughs> yeah, sounds interesting. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Okay, you still have two weeks. Yeah. <laughs>